the aluminum oxide on your mineral list is going to be corundum. Corundum is a super um, obvious mineral once you've seen it. If you have it in hand sample or you're just looking at, the first thing that catches my eye about corundum is its crystal habit or the shape that it grows in. It loves to form these hexagonal prisms, so six-sided prisms here if we were to count out. I've got a couple different examples here. Um, these two are more like platy, I would say, and then this is a real hexagonal prism. It has six sides and we can look down the c-axis of it and then see that we also have that six-sided form as well. So corundum very, very typically forms in this kind of hexagonal prism shape. Another thing to note here is the luster of corundum. Lots of times if you have a really good sample, you'll have um, a vitreous to subvitreous luster, but these samples almost have a more waxy luster to them because we don't have really well-defined crystal faces here. They're defined in shape, but we don't have any of that perfect reflective surface to kind of see the luster. And so this is going to be a little bit more waxy, um, subvitreous, and if we had a really good sample, this one's even a little bit better, but so we've got a little bit of that glassy kind of surface, but this one's almost like frosted glass, right? So a little bit, a little bit waxier, I would say. But all of these have a really great crystal form. Another thing to note on this is going to be um, hardness. So these are so hard, it's pointless to do a streak test. It's not going to work. Corundum's at a nine on the Mohs hardness scale. So it's one of the harder minerals that we have on our list for mineral identification. So doing a streak test is not going to help you out here. Um, this diagnostic shape and then the hardness and density are going to be three of the most obvious things. Even though this is an aluminum oxide mineral and we think about aluminum being really low density because of the packing structure that we have in corundum this is a really really dense mineral and it's super dense for a silicate or for um not a silicate mineral but um it's just really dense for a non-metallic mineral there's all right and then another thing to note too is color it typically forms in these kind of brown gray tones this one's maybe got a little bit of a tinge of blue to it but these kind of earthier tones are really um, common, but two common varieties in gem form would be sapphire and ruby, which if you get those really beautiful clear gems, they're worth quite a bit of money. But so there's a little bit of color variation with corundum. It's not always super diagnostic. Um, another thing that is common, but maybe not super common, but can happen, is that we also have some fluorescence. So let's do a little fluorescence test here with a UV light. All right, so these two samples that are kind of the darker colors, they don't really show fluorescence, but this here, um, this is uh, an ugly kind of ruby, actually does have some really good fluorescence going on. Let's let the camera get back up to light here. So overall, this one does not have cleavage either. Um, corundum doesn't readily cleave. You can guess why. It's a really hard, well-packed structure. It would be really hard to readily cleave this in nature. Um, you can definitely do cutting and gem cutting and things like that, but that's a little bit different. Um, and so overall, the most diagnostic properties of this, density, the shape that it grows in, um, and the color as well as the hardness. And that's that, corundum, the aluminum oxide in your group.